<laughs> so, sorry. so I'm Donald Chevinia, so thank you for inviting me. Uh, so I'm in charge of customer operations in the uh, Haynes brands. Customer operation means in the Haynes world, uh, forecasting, uh, customer service, and distribution to our uh, customers. Um, so I'm happy here to share with you a business case. I would say that uh, we, we've done on a mission, a journey, we've done uh, along with, uh, with Future Master uh, in the specific context of the company, uh, meaning uh, within an uh, integration uh, meaning that uh, DB Apparel uh, has been bought by Heinz Brand a few years ago, and then we, we've done this project within this context. So I'm going to present you the Heinz Brands, then we'll do a small brief of what, is, uh, uh, what has been a Heinz Brand acquisition, and then how we, de we did create a value uh, uh, within the global company that uh, is a Heinz Brand. So Heinz Brands, Heinz Brands is a big company, six billion dollars uh, uh, revenue uh, each year, uh, over sixty uh, uh, thousand uh, employees in the, in the world in uh, uh, twenty-five uh, countries. The headquarters are based in North Carolina in uh, Winston Salem. So we are proud of it. I know it's a bit trendy uh, now to uh, talk about these topics. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we've been working on that for fifteen years now, so we are quite proud of it. Uh, we, uh, we have the chance to own our own plants. So that's why we can uh, say that uh, we have some, uh, let's say, some uh, high standards in terms of uh, labor conditions. Uh, we master better uh, topics like child work, which is sometimes quite important to the textile industry. Uh, so we can manage this kind of uh, uh, topic while having our uh, own uh, uh, factories. And of course, uh, we have all the uh, environment impact topics that we've been working on for the last 15 years, like uh, uh, water use, uh, energy, uh, etc., etc. So we have been multiple times awarded on that. Uh, but uh, okay, this is uh, we're quite proud of it, and we of course keep on going on this kind of uh, on this kind of topic. One of the key points in the textile industry is to have strong brands and we have a great portfolio of strong brands so whenever you come from wherever you come from you probably know one of these brands uh, if you're French you of course know Dim uh, if you uh, uh, from the US you know very well Champion or Haynes uh, if you come from uh, Asia uh, Australia brand things bonds are uh, very, uh, number ones uh, in these uh, in these uh, territories so we are proud of it. Uh, we have a great, great portfolio of uh, leading, uh, leading brands, which are all global, all local. But anyway, that's uh, a key, uh, a key point for us. Uh, we are leading, leading. We have leading market shares in uh, multiple categories in the textile industry: t-shirt, bras, panties, uh, socks, lingerie, casual wear, active wear. Uh, so we, we work across uh, multiple categories in the textile industry. Brands is a key asset, of course, but uh, what we consider as another uh, competitive advantage is our supply chain. Why? Because we are uh, a unique player uh, having its own, uh, its own uh, plants. We are not sourcing, we are making, and uh, we are uh, quite happy with it. And to us, that really brings a competitive advantage. So we uh, manufacture over 2 billion pieces a year. Uh, with our, not coming back on the number of employees, but we have, uh, we have a 44 uh, distribution center and we own uh, 50 uh, factories. Uh, so majority is done in Asia or in Central uh, America, but we hold, also still have plants uh, in Europe, especially uh, on the augury business. Uh, why? Because it is, let's say, uh, quite automated for at least a big part of the process. So we are still able to, to keep and we are really proud of it to keep uh, some uh, augury plants in, the, in Europe. On the left, you have uh, the company uh, strategy, which is quite simple, but when it's simply said, it's easier to understand. So the brand power, I've uh, of course uh, discussed that with you. Uh, innovation, innovation platform that we are using, and uh, we want to leverage our supply chain. And the combination of these three elements is what we call innovate to elevate, so the I to E, uh, which is uh, clearly our strategy. On the right part of the slide, we have how you decline that on the more supply chain aspect is invent and leverage big platforms uh, and establish scalable systems and processes. The third point is an important one in the context that we are uh, discussing. Clearly, 
uh, Haynes has grown through uh, external acquisition, and one of the key lever is to uh, internalize all the volumes that were used to be uh, outsourced, let's say, uh, through uh, suppliers and sources. And now we put all these volumes in our in our plants, which is of of course uh, bringing us some uh, uh, scale and uh, some productivity, and of course be able then to uh, pro to propose, um, let's say, a very good um, cost quality ratio to our uh, customers. Therefore, we operate a low cost supply chain. So what is the underwear business? OK, for everybody, it could, looks like it's very simple. But there is some kind of hidden complexity behind this. You have a bra here. But in the bra, you propose it in multiple colors to please our older women. You, have, you must have it coordinated with the bottom, uh, but not always. And uh, you have a wide uh, range of uh, sizes. Of course, each specific um, uh, channel of trade will require some different packaging. So you can put it on a hanger, a purple one, a crystal one. You can put it in a box. So all these elements is bringing clearly some complexity in the overall uh, supply chain. So we need to manage this complexity to, uh, to bring a high level of standard of performance. Other uh, challenge, seasonal business. 30% of our SKU change every season summer, spring, autumn, winter. So 30% of our, uh, our SKUs have very uh, short uh, cycle uh, lifetime, I would say. We manage in Europe 20,000 uh, uh, SKU per year. And we have quite long lead time in this industry, six to eight months, uh, meaning that sometimes you need to forecast some products when you ha still have not presented your product to your customer. So it's quite a challenge. So hence Europe acquisition. A successful journey. This is the beginning of the story. On the left, you have Hans Brands at the beginning, before buying DBA Apparel. So, three countries, mainly the US, uh, with the two common language. On the left, uh, you have Hans Brand, Hans Europe. Sorry, is that right for you? <laughs> which is Hans Brand. So, this is Europe. Uh, this is Europe, which is uh, 90, uh, 49 uh, countries, uh, 26 different uh, countries in Schengen, and uh, over 100 languages. So, which is a, can be, to some point, a strange word uh, seen from the United States. In the States, the business is quite concentrated, I would say, with uh, a few big customers, like uh, big players like Amazon, Target, Walmart, uh, so a very few uh, channels of trade. While in Europe, we have multiple different uh, type of customers, different uh, channel of trade that we need, uh, we need to manage. So mass market, retail, internet, few players, own e-shop, hard discounts, uh, with all the specific uh, requirements that we, uh, we have to tackle. And of course, the last one <laughs> is that, uh, let's say, more simple business, huge volumes, much more fragmented business, lower volumes. So clearly, the supply chain is not clearly, uh, uh, as, a first, uh, as a first guess, is not clearly uh, uh, answering to the, let's say, European uh, needs. So that's why, okay, we have our brands, which is a key asset, but how do we take advantage? How do we benefit from uh, the key competitive advantage we have with the supply chain? How do we take a full benefit of this? Well, we had to re-challenge ourselves, reassess our processes, and adapt them to make sure that we were taking, uh, having full benefit of this uh, global supply chain. Therefore, we, re we revised, we challenged, and we adapted our organization and our processes to make, f to make sure that uh, we could uh, uh, create value uh, from uh, this supply chain. It has been a success. Uh, it's not finished. We st it's still always a long journey, of course. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, when we had the acquisition in 2014, uh, the revenue has grown, the profit has, uh, has, has grown too, uh, tremendously. So we are happy of it, proud of it, but still a lot, of, a lot of, uh, to do. So how did we use this global supply chain? Two parts here, we have, let's say, the global supply chain of the upper part, which is the planning and the manufacturing and locally managed in the business unit, we had the forecasting, sending the signal to the supply chain, and the distribution and the selling. So I am in charge of this lower part, so if I don't send a good demand signal in the supply chain, 
I pay for it at the end because I'm not able to serve the customers. So the loop is done. How do we do manage that? First, we have implemented, of course, uh, let's say some classical root management routines uh, with weekly uh, processes where forecasting and uh, customer service and the supply chain are all talking together, uh, what we call track meeting. And the supply chain is providing us a projected view of uh, the product availability. And then we manage that uh, for the stock allocation through the customer service. Of course, it's an uh, important meeting for the forecasting to get some input, some feedback on what uh, has been done six, seven, eight months ago. Uh, to, uh, and then because we are seeing the impact downstream uh, of the process. And we have, of course, a monthly loop, which is higher level, longer term, uh, especially as we own our plants, we need to book some capacity internally to say to our plants, okay, we need this such amount of capacity uh, to, to be able to serve our business. So we need to provide this visibility. So as we've seen there, we have the global supply chain and the local uh, business. So different world. So how do we use them? You have here fast fashion, product packaging uh, to, to adapt, multiple countries, different constraints. And you have the global supply chain with its own uh, uh, IT systems. Uh, clearly here we had this local ERP, I would say local ERPs. Uh, so we had to some point need to be able to liaise these two worlds. And that's why uh, we, um, uh, we uh, the, the, the forecast, uh, forecasting team, let's say, the forecasting processes is in charge of Mickey making this link between these two worlds, the demand and local, uh, local constraints with the global supply chain. Aggregating all the demand of the European level, for sure, but then sending the relevant signal that the supply chain is going to be able to use uh, to for, for sure, uh, make sure that we fully benefit of its, uh, uh, of its uh, let's say, uh, high scale volume uh, and productivity uh, 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 value. In our, uh, I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but at least in hands, forecasting is used for two topics. Of course, we all know this part. The in we want to increase the service level. We want to uh, decrease the stock through uh, best, uh, the best of forecast accuracy. But it's also used uh, for the business plan. So that's why, in fact, we don't call it forecasting internally. We call it business planning because it's, uh, uh, we base our uh, financial and business plan uh, according to uh, the forecasting, the forecast we are, we are doing. So it's uh, critical. And when we do our monthly sign-off with uh, marketing, sales, country managers, we talk money. And after, we come back to the volumes. So we build it with the volumes. We translate that in money. And then after, we come back to volumes if we see that we are not aligned with our uh, budget. So improving the forecast. So I'm not saying this is the only levers. What I'm saying it is the levers that were important to us internally that we know that uh, could play on the forecast accuracy. Uh, and the levers, I would say, on which we had a hand and a power. Uh, SKU complexity. Textile is a SKU intensive business. Uh, we try to reduce the SKU complexity. Uh, we have dreamt of it, <laughs> but for sure with the fast fashion trend, etc. Clearly, the SKU uh, is tends to increase. The number of SKUs tends to increase and to decrease. Um, the number of people I've heard the lactalis uh, topic before. Yes, most of the time, forecasting is more seen as a cost center than uh, a value creator uh, department. So uh, for sure, we know it's a constraint dimension. So uh, we, you can dream asking uh, additional resources for sure. It's not an option. And therefore, the big, let's say, uh, last uh, uh, lever we uh, clearly worked on is for, was redefining our uh, 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 forecast building process. Uh, to make sure that uh, we were uh, improving our forecast accuracy. So we have been able to, let's say, stabilize the number of SKUs. We have been able to work uh, also on the number of people uh, uh, dimension, but it's probably not going the right way, it's more reduction. Uh, and then we've worked a lot, we've focused our all efforts on uh, building uh, a new process. And of course, the process is a good thing, but you also need the relevant tool to do this. And then we have chosen uh, 
uh, Future Master to uh, support us in all this uh, approach because Future Master is quite an adaptive tool, uh, able to answer to all the uh, topics we have discussed before, which is, uh, let's say, adapt to uh, this, uh, uh, being able to answer to the specific global supply chain requirements. Of course, being more efficient because we have pressure on the resources and uh, bring the relevant KPIs to make sure that we are in a cont continuous improvement loop. So where did we start from? We started from uh, our product portfolio and we have segmented it in two, uh, big, two big categories. The continuative products, the, uh, rep, uh, the, the permanent products, I would say, that are always on the shelves. Your uh, panties, your black panties for the man, you, always, you will always sell the black panties. Uh, so uh, you have them for 10 years. Uh, okay, you renew them a little bit, we adapt a bit to the, the, the packaging, but nevertheless, it is a permanent product. You have historical data, you can work on it. Uh, it's repetitive sales. Uh, so that's what we call our blockbusters, meaning the biggest part of our business. And then you have the seasonal products and the promotion, which is, as I said before, uh, six months uh, life cycle time uh, and the promotion which is very very linked to uh, the interaction that you have with your customers you can suggest some promotion it doesn't mean that your customer will accept them and will want them um, so we have two different data driven let's say uh, continuative products because we have historical data and then the seasonal products and your promotion is more driven by your sales relationship with your customers Therefore, we have adapted our, organiza our organization to this. Cent we have centralized the, the continuative product forecasting because it's data intensive and we have some specific profile of people over there. It is some people that like crunching the data and that, of course understanding it. And then we have taken advantage here of the, uh, let's say, uh, statistical forecasting the capability from Future Master. And then uh, we have kept some local people in the teams to have close relationship with the marketing and sales teams to be able to get the, uh, let's say, last update and have a better understanding of uh, what was happening close to the market uh, to, uh, and with, uh, with the customers. Uh, and then the signal sent to the supply chain is split in two, is the make to stock strategy with the, your recurring uh, permanent products and the make to order one, you have a specific promo to our customer you uh, manufacture the, projects, the product just for him, uh, so it's a make uh, to order approach. So as said, centralized uh, for uh, blockbusters, local uh, uh, event planner, what we call event planner uh, in each country. And, um, and this, this is a single team, why? Because when you sell uh, some products, uh, you sell a big promo uh, to a customer, of course, your, uh, the end consumer will buy the, your promotion, but of course, will buy less of the products, the permanent products you have on the shelf. That's why these two population, I would say, of the business planning team need to liaise every day, need to work together, uh, need to, uh, to, to make sure that the forecast accuracy is optimal. Uh, so different profile, even planners are some people that need to be able to go and see the marketing people, to liaise with them, to discuss with them, so to have, let's say, very good interpersonal uh, skills, while uh, the statistical planners need to be more, let's say, data-oriented and be able to analyze the data. Future Master, of course, uh, provided the relevant tool uh, to support us through the modeliz modelization uh, forecast and uh, the automatic update that would uh, help us also, our team, to focus on value-added tasks, except uh, then uh, just uh, collecting data, re re putting them in relevant format, etc., etc. KPIs, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. You all have some KPIs to measure wh uh, how good you are. Nevertheless, I would just spend some time on the rolling KPIs. That's, for me, is the most important because I am also at the downstream part of the process through the customer service uh, and uh, inventory management. So that's why understanding how uh, your forecast accuracy is impacting uh, your inventory level and how your, uh, your uh, forecast is impacting your service level, is, uh, it's critical. So that's why to, on this dimension, the rolling KPI is, uh, is uh, clearly very, very interesting. Loops. 
continuous improvement. Uh, we can be good or bad. What's most important is the trend of uh, what you're doing. Is it improving? Is it, uh, let's say, getting uh, uh, bad? Uh, so we have two, let's say, continuous improvement loop. We have some with our uh, sales, uh, sales and marketing team to, uh, to uh, let's say, challenge their input, to provide them some data uh, on the past on the, and to make sure that uh, they are fully relevant in the input they are providing. Uh, by definition, a sales guy always wants to sell more. Nevertheless, it doesn't mean it's, really, it's, going, to, it's going to become truth and reality. So they clearly need some challenge from the, from the business planning team. Uh, and of course, with supply chain, uh, we can send a demand signal. Uh, nevertheless, it doesn't mean that this is going to happen. They need to be uh, re reliable too. And we need to understand also uh, with them uh, how they uh, consider our demand, demand signal to just understand if we need to adapt it or change uh, our way of uh, uh, forecasting our products. So we have, of course, a regular meeting with that uh, based on the KPIs to, to challenge these points. Results and benefits, so that's not up-to-date figures, but the target was to increase the forecast accuracy by 10%. According to the different categories, we are plus 5, plus 2, plus 11, depending on the product category. I can tell you that on the uh, rolling forecast accuracy, we are between 75 and 85 uh, forecast accuracy uh, on, the, on the permanent products. So meaning that on this uh, dimension, we are good. We still have some challenges on the seasonal and promo products. It's less database, so more difficult. So we have increased our cancellation rate. Uh, we have increased uh, by far more now. Uh, this is six months old uh, data, to be honest. So, but we have done we have done some uh, further further improvement. People, we have been able to reduce the number of people. That was not the, first, the primary goal of the of the topic. Clearly, nevertheless, we have been able to do this. But most important, we have been able to refocus people and clear tasks for them, and. Uh, so it's uh, something that you can't put KPI on, but you can feel that the team are quite happy with the new processes. Uh, they, there is more meaning in what they are doing, and they are more focusing on uh, working on the data or working with other people, using with other teams, than on, uh, as I was saying, uh, com let's say collecting data, uh, putting them in a relevant format, etc., etc. So they can focus on their, let's say, value created, uh, uh, yeah, to value creation. Uh, and the BS, there was no specific target to the, on that. What we can say uh, is a clear benefit for the supply chain. Uh, we have, we're putting less bullwhip, bullwhip effect in the supply chain because uh, this BS is reducing, so we put that a bit more the, under control. So clearly it's a benefit also for, for supply chain. Just a key learning for us. Uh, it may sound stupid to say it like this, but when a company is buying yours, <laughs> Uh, the global company is a big company, is buying a smaller one uh, and is coming with its global processes. It's useless trying to fight against the global processes. You just, you just try to understand them. Just try to understand how you can take advantage of it. Embrace the change uh, but, uh, and try to adapt and take, okay, take benefit of it. But okay, it's useless trying to say, I am too, I'm too specific. This is not going to work for my company. This is not going to work for my business. We are different, etc., etc. Just try to understand how it works and to, uh, to make sure that you adapt well to, uh, at the end of the day, uh, create a value for everybody. Thanks. Thank you very much, Donald. Yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, this business case with Haynes Brands uh, was awarded. I mean, um, you, you finished number two exactly. at the Supply Chain Excellence Awards uh, in November last year in London. So thank you and congratulations yeah, again. Thanks to you. Uh, are there any questions in the in the room in the assembly? Any questions? You have one? Yeah, of course. At what level are you measuring forecast accuracy? Skew market, skew channel. Skew. Uh, we have two levels. We have the, skew, the 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 skew level, and we have the what we we call the SPVC, the style pack color variance. So it's okay. We have two levels. Yeah. But the figures here uh, that you have, you have seen was at the SKU level. Any other questions? Yeah, so the presentation was actually filmed and uh, broadcasted live on YouTube. So if you want to share it and see it again, uh, you, I mean, you can.
Thank you. And yeah, and last but not least, at the next presentation is at 3.45 and it will be Heineken that will be presenting. So please uh, come back. Thank you.